You're welcome back. It's still Plus Politics on Plus TV Africa. Now, political parties have kicked against the new cash withdrawal limits introduced by the Central Bank of Nigeria, stating that it could choke the political process. Governor Amadou Fintri of Adamawa State had even accused the Central Bank Governor Godwin Emefile of targeting the political class with a new cash withdrawal limit, which restricts over-the-counter cash withdrawal by individuals and companies to 100,000 Naira and 500,000 Naira, respectively, per week. According to a memo signed by the CBN's Director of Banking Supervision, Haruna Mustafa, withdrawals above the threshold would attract processing fees of 5% and 10%, respectively, for individuals and corporate entities going forward. In addition, third-party checks above 50,000 Naira shall not be eligible for OTC payment, while extant limits of 10 million Naira on clearing checks still remain. Joining us live to discuss this is Kaj Ononuju, the Special Advisor on Public Affairs to the Presidential Candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, and we're hoping to be joined also by Honorable Angu Ongu, SSA to the Benue State Governor on Student Affairs on, and North Central Zonal Coordinator at Tiku Support Organization. Mr. Kaj, in the meantime, welcome to the program. Thank you very much for having me. Okay, we're glad to have you. Um, what is really the grounds um, with the policy of the maximum withdrawal as brought by the Central Bank of Nigeria? Well, from what I can see, a lot of people want the old system they're very used to. I think it's an issue of us not being very used to change. I think the fact that cellular telephony a Hana has service in every neck and corner of this country. We should allow this a try. And if there are problems, amendments will be done in front. I do not want to sell hysteria to the population. But all I will say, nobody is holding your money. All they are simply trying to reduce is the physical cash available on daily transactions in the Nigerian economy. So I think we're going to get by. Okay, I'm not going to raise alarms. But let's see how it goes. I'm sure the same standards will apply to all. Buhari has its reasons. Central Bank is in charge of monetary policy, and it has made its move. Let's see. And of course, they've said that they are going to be flexible. Let's see what that means. They will be flexible. Let's watch them. Let's play along. And let's raise our voices for those things that will undermine, especially the SMEs and the very poor within our population. Apart from anything else, uh, some of the people who have argued against this policy say, as good as it might seem, the timing is really, really wrong. What is your take on that? Well, the timing and it's being wrong, it's as a consequence of the calculation by some politicians that they will do vote buying. If you do vote buying, who else you want to pay to? You want to pay to all your co-agents, you can pay them through the wire transfer. But unless you want to do good buying, that's what you need, excessive cash. That's not proper. That's undemocratic. So I think if you evaluate it from the noise from the political class, I think uh, it's a good uh, policy by the government to try to dissuade as much as possible the incidence of vote buying. Do you really think it will have a very big influence on uh, this vote buying? Because, like they say, uh, if the bird learns to fly without perching, the, the hunter will learn to shoot without missing. So, will it really affect whether or not people will buy votes? You cannot stop people from trying to cheat. Don't forget that's the problem Nigeria has. You can stop them from trying to cheat. And that's the reason why we should do everything possible to reduce that particular I intention to cheat. They would try to do anything they want. Let us stay this and watch how it goes. If there are problems since the central bank, they will, are willing to be flexible. We will raise our voices and they will fine tune as we go on. I, do, I don't really think there should be a need for panic. We will still survive this. They're simply trying to withdraw as much physical cash as possible from the fiscal economy. 
Okay, but um, some other people have also expressed concern that even though uh, this is a good policy, and like you say, that we shouldn't uh, panic, but um, be optimistic that it is going to work. We are going to uh, get by. But do you believe in the, the banking system of Nigeria that they are going to pull through with all this? Because we've seen situations As I told where, you, where transactions this is are... Yeah. Yeah. I told you this is something new. So the country will have to grapple with this. Let us see how it goes. No idea comes out perfectly. But you work on them as the time goes on. So let's see how this comes. And together we'll help the central bank to actually sort everything as we go forward. No, the, the, the concern is not even about whether it's, it's a new thing. I'm, I'm concerned about... <laughs> my question was, how much faith do you have in the banking system as at now, even without this new policy? Let the policy stay. We should not have too much argument about this. There are people who wish to buy votes. If the government doesn't want that, it can reduce the incidence of vote buying. That's okay. Let's see what goes on. People should stop complaining and face up to the facts. Okay. Uh, well, we've been joined by our second guest, Mr. Angu Ongu, who is SSA to the governor of Benue State. Uh, Mr. Ongu, uh, welcome to the program. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good to have me. Yeah. Awesome. Well, awesome. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. We, we were just asking, um, what do you feel about uh, this uh, policy of the Central Bank of Nigeria? Uh, that they have said that there's a maximum, they've pecked the maximum of withdrawal uh, to 100,000 per week for individuals and 500,000 per week on individuals. What do you think about the policy, especially as it affects the upcoming election? Mr. Ong. Um, yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, my thoughts. Yeah, uh, to share my thoughts, thank you very much. Uh, good evening, Nigerians. It's good to have me in your studios again. Uh, I would like to quickly say that, okay, I'm no longer a senior social assistant to the Benue State Governor. I, October 19th, 2022, I resigned my appointment from the Benue State Government. Mm. Okay. So, thank you very much. Uh, I would like to say that the monetary policy that has been put in place by the CBN, as good as the same, uh, it has nothing to do with elections being by the corner or not, nothing about the timing. Uh, but if we look at the law, the law is very clear on monetary withdrawal. So, if we now come out, make pronouncements here and there that are not backed up by the law, it then begins to seem as if we are a banana island, we are a lawless people. Because every pronouncement of government should be backed up by law. So to say that there is nothing wrong, Nigerians should stop complaining. Uh, it is not correct. As much as we want to strengthen our system, go cashless. Whatever should uh, pronouncement, whatever measures that are to be put in place uh, for us to go cashless should be backed up by the law. So uh, I would like to say quickly, as many other Nigerians have observed, the pronouncements by the CBN have no backing in law. So if the CBN wants to bring about a cashless society in Nigeria, there are some sections of the law that needs to be amended. And I think until that is done, uh, implementing obnoxious laws uh, will not help uh, Nigerians. Uh, the CBN should go back, review the laws that believe we are no they must have done that. And that is why there is this general feeling that maybe the CBN is making this pronouncement by this time to affect politicians. Because we expect that the CBN 
uh, as a body of government, as an institution of government, should know the law very well. Should not just come out and make pronouncements. Uh -uh. But, so but I, 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 I don't I don't understand you. Mr Mr. Ongo, Mr. Ongo, just yes, just sir. a moment. I, I do not understand. The C B N uh, there is a law that established the C B N and there's a law that gave the C B N the autonomy to do a lot of things including to change the face of the Naira that it just did now. Uh, it didn't need another Very law well. uh, by the legislature to do that. So why do you think it doesn't have the powers to peg whatever they want to peg as an autonomous body? Yes, sir. I will take you to the Money Laundry Act 2022. Section 2 of that law says that. Section 2 of that law, 1, says no person or body, corporate or corporate body, shall accept a transaction through a financial institution, make or accept cash payment of a sum exceeding a five million naira or its equivalent in the case of an individual. Hmm. B. 10 million naira or its equivalent in the case of a corporate body. Hmm. That is section 2 of the Money Laundry Act 2022. So, what the CPL is saying now contravenes this law. So, that is why we are saying there shouldn't be any contradiction. So, if there is such a law, and the CBN goes ahead to make pronouncements that are not backed up by law. It then leaves Nigerians to, to buy into conspiracy theories that look, it is because of elections uh, and to maybe avoid vote buying. There are better ways to avoid vote buying, not to make obnoxious laws or pronouncements, just like the CBN has done. So the CPN should go back and do the right thing. The CPN should go back and look at them. Really, there is a law creating it, right? But there is there are other laws too. Hmm. And I don't think any apart from the Nigerian Constitution, I don't think any other law supersedes the other. Okay, okay, let me remain with you before I go. I go back to um, our, our first guest. Um, you have just said something about um, laws being being broken by this pronouncement, and the way the 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 pronouncements by Governor Fintiri, for instance, of the PDP, who is in Adamawa State, uh, suggests that maybe the CBN did this out of jealousy, uh, that so that it will affect the politicians, like you have also said <laughs> as well. What actually, how actually will this law affect the politicians? Because if you can still do transfers, you can still do a lot of other things without carrying the cash around. How do you think it's really going to affect the politicians? That, 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 that is what we are saying. Uh, uh, what we are saying is the CBN should do the right thing. The CBN should not leave room for people to speculate. And the business of governance, the business of policy formulation is very serious business. And you don't leave it to speculations. Just like you mentioned, His Excellency, uh, the Governor of Adamawa State, Governor Ahmed Fintiri, uh, that he was saying, he, he made pronouncements that, you know, it's, uh, which haunt politicians also. You don't, you don't allow that to happen when you are making uh, policies of government. Uh, uh, where... Uh, did you sit in town hall meetings? Because I think sometimes when some pronouncements are made, you need to get a buy-in of stakeholders. Which is we Nigerians. Was the buy-in of stakeholders gotten before such pronouncements were made? Or it was just at the whims of someone or somewhere that feels, okay, let's do this. Because it's, it's good. I want to say the policy is a good policy. Come on. We are all talking about cashless society. But that should be done uh, 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 with, without leaving us to speculation. That should be done being backed up by law. And I would like to quote the second part of uh, that section 2 of the Money Laundry Act. Uh, 
2022, which states that a person shall not conduct two or more transactions separately with one or more financial institution or designated non-financial businesses and professions okay. with intent to one avoid the duty to report the transaction which should be reported under the act b breach the duty to disclose information under this act by any other means i want to say that this section two actually covers part of what the cpi wants to do now Okay. Because what the CBI wants to do now is we now even give room for people to do multiple, you know, transactions. Okay. All right. Right. Okay. What we are saying is maybe this particular law that may make me want to take the CBI to court should be reviewed, mm. and allowance will now be made for what the CBI is now saying. Okay. So we should do our laws. We should get the buying of stakeholders before coming now to make uh, it is very flimsy that the CBN governor will just come out and make pronouncement. The buying of stakeholders should be gotten and read other relevant laws should be looked into. And when that is not done, it leads us to speculations. Okay, let, let me go to Mr. Kach Ononuju here. Uh, Mr. Kach, you were very very optimistic uh, you were very yeah optimistic is the word that everything will work out for us and all that uh people are expressing concern and all but you need to talk to the people the people in nigeria how how you feel the election of 2023 is going to be in spite of these new policies and all that we already know that um some people have taken cbn to court like uh, uh falano for instance uh, a, a, a lawyer of renown has taken the CBN to court and is saying he's going to fight it because it's illegal. But what do you have to say to either that or the people who are also askans about this, who are also very pessimistic about uh, what the outcome might be because of this policy? It does not matter what they say. We, law, we live in a society governed by the rule of law. Mm -hmm. Try the laws. If you have any opposition interrogate whatever it is there is no big issues about this game i think the decision has been taken in line with cbn's belief that it is it's exclusive for multiple policies so whoever disagrees it's right to go as far as it has gone let them go to court it's as simple as that i don't think we should make a noise about this okay so Okay, so uh, finally to you, uh, Mr. Ononoju, let's just know how much faith do you have in next year's election, as election, whether policy or no policy, how much faith do you have in the preparation of INEC and in whatever has been put in place to make sure that the election comes and goes next year? Nothing is given, nothing is cast in stone. We now have a brand new law, the Electoral Act, we're going to try it for the first time, the amendments yeah. that demands biometric authentication before voting, okay. that counsels the need for incident form, that also counsels the need for the collection center, which is the center where the region occur mostly. So we're changing our country. Let us see how it will go. We are quite optimistic that this will help. And that's why you see the youth are much more optimistic about the politics but those who believe in transactional politics are the ones who are thinking of the old order. So I think I'm very optimistic about next year. Mm. And I want all Nigerians to be optimistic. Okay. And to see the electoral as something similar to the Civil Rights Act. Mm. I want Nigerians to be hopeful again that a better Nigeria is possible. And they can actually do take back their country. Okay. I believe that to be so. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Um, uh, Ongu, I'd also like you to... Uh, tell us your, give us your final word, what you feel about the next year's election, how optimistic or otherwise you are that we are going to succeed. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm very uh, optimistic. Uh, so, first of all, that we are always at the uh, INEC, very bold uh, policy changes that uh, we Nigerians, I think before now, felt were long overdue. Uh, those bold changes. And just like my brother uh, actually mentioned, uh, 
we hope that next year's election is going to going to be better. The life of loading, uh, unloading of elections results, those are going to improve our elections greatly. And I would like to say that my party, the People's Democratic Party, uh, under the flag bearer presidential flag bearer chief of uh, His Excellency, the former vice president of Nigeria, and now we are poised. As I speak to, I speak to you from Jos, the capital city of Plato. Uh, we were here today to canvass for votes, and uh, we are poised. The PDP is poised to recover this country, rescue this nation, and rebuild a very vibrant Nigeria. So the PDP as a party that I belong to, uh, we are ready, we are poised, and with, as I mentioned, with the bold policy changes within uh, our electoral empire, the Independent National Electoral Commission, uh, the elections of next year, are good. going to be quite, yeah. quite, quite credible. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen, for being there and sharing your, your thoughts on the whole process. And uh, Kach Ononuju, thank you so much for coming on the program. And also, Mr. Angu Ongu, who you corrected us. You are now just the Zonal Coordinator at Tiku Support Organization. Thank you so much for being a part of our program today. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate it. Okay, uh, that's how we wrap it up on Plus Politics tonight. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. To have a good evening. <laughs>